And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here again, and today we're going to take a look at a Euro game, uh, but one that uses dice, and it's going to be about building your city up. Uh, it's going to use these dice in kind of a Yahtzee type way, and it's called Saint Malo, or Malo. Uh, and this is a two to five player game, as I said, in which you roll dice in order to get results, which you will use to build things in your city or to recruit people to your city. Uh, the game is by Leah Ravensburger, but real quick, why don't we take a look at what you get inside of this box and how the game plays, and then we'll come back here and we'll get my final opinion on Saint Malo. So here you can see some of the components for St. Malo. Now this is a central player board that's basically just got a lot of information on it and will be kind of a tracker for some bad events that will happen through the game, which are pirate attacks. Now you can see on this chart, it has lines for, or columns for two, three, four, and five players. Uh, they basically just increase the amount of pirate attacks, the amount of uh, cross sabers here that will happen before each of these attacks occurs. So in two players it's going to happen four times before there's an attack, but with three players it'll be six. Four will be even more and five will be even more than that. So let's just assume we're playing a two-player game here. Now the way that this game works is that the players are going to have these dice. Uh, and each player is also going to have this little board of their own. So this is just informational and round keeping. This is where all the action is going to happen really. And on a player's turn they're going to roll all five of these dice. Now you'll see here that you'll get some combination of results. After your first roll, you can actually re-roll the dice. So let's say you uh, rolled one of these heads here that's a person, uh, it's green, and you wanted to keep that and you wanted to re-roll dice to try and get more. Well, you roll again and you don't like the results here. Maybe you decide to keep walls this time. You get a total of three rolls and you can carry over dice from one roll to the next. So maybe I roll one more time. Okay, so these are my final results. I have two walls, I have a crate, I have a person, and I have a church symbol. And I can choose to take one of these results, meaning I could take, take the two walls or I could take any of the individuals. And maybe I decided to take walls as my option for this turn. So what I could do here is I would be able to take these walls and I would draw walls in on my little board here. So you have this dry erase board and you're going to start drawing walls in on this thing here. And what walls are going to do are they're going to increase your defense. On defense will be important at some point during the game because pirates are going to come and attack. And if pirates successfully attack, they're going to destroy one of your cannons along your outside of your wall here. And these cannons, if lost, give you negative victory points, minus five points for each cannon that you lose. So the idea here is you're going to roll these dice and try and get different results in order to build up your city. Walls being important for defense. Now, in addition to that, you could, for example, have taken logs, maybe rolled a bunch of logs. Logs are going to be important for building houses inside of your city, so they're just a resource. But if you decide to take logs, in this case I would get two logs. And in order to take the logs, I have to pay money. Well, you start the game with three money here. You can see them drawn in on your board. So if I decided to take two logs, I would draw my logs in on here, but I would lose two money, so I would cross them out off of my board. So that's how you're going to get logs. So there's two of the results. Churches, if you decide to take churches when you roll them, are going to let you put a church out onto your board. On uh, churches are basically little buildings with steeples on top of them, so it's going to be something like this, uh, with a, like that. And I can put in this the number equal to the dice that I rolled or lower. In this case, it would be three or lower, two or one. And I can put that number in there. So when I draw that in there, let's just put a two down there. We'll say I decided to take a two, and it's hard to write upside down, but it's a two. That church is going to be the two-value church, and you're trying to make a string of churches by the end of the game that are connected uh, orthogonally. So one church is worth one point, two churches is worth four points, three churches is worth eight, and so forth and so on upwards. So what you're going to need is one church of each value in that grouping in order to get all of the points. A one through a five church, which could be hard to get because you need five dice in order to get a five church. So that's churches. So we've gone over churches and logs. We've gone over walls. People are a little bit different. Well, not really. When you roll people and you decide to take them, whatever the number is you have, you're going to get to put a person in your city. One person would be a citizen, and that would simply be marked by drawing a circle and putting a C inside of it. That soldier, or that citizen, sorry, is worth one point right away. Now, if you had two, you could either choose a soldier or a priest. It's going to be an S or a P inside of the circle. Soldiers will add one to your defense strength, whereas priests will get one point per adjacent church when you place them. So if I were to put a priest right here, right now, I would get one point because he's adjacent to that church that I drew on the board. 
With three people, or three heads, you can get an architect or a merchant. Well, architects are going to use up your logs. So if I place an architect right now, I have four logs. And what I can do is I can build houses, up to three of them, for one log apiece. And the number of houses I build are going to give me points, three, six, or nine. But when I build them, they have to be placed at least one of them adjacent to the architect I put on the board, and the other one's adjacent to that. So you're going to have a connected area of houses that are adjacent to your architects. The merchant is going to give you money based on the number of crates he's adjacent to. So if I were to put a merchant right here, I'd draw an M, I would get money for all these crates that start on your board. I get one, two, three, four money, and I would draw those in over here. So that's what's going to happen if you decide to place a merchant. Now with four or five, you're going to get into a little bit more point scoring. The juggler, which would just be a J inside of a circle somewhere, is going to get Two, dollar, two points per adjacent type of person. So you want to get him near all of your people. Maybe you have a merchant and you have a citizen and a soldier and a priest and you can get him in the middle of all of them and they give you two points per. And then finally, if you manage to get the Yahtzee of people, you can put a nobleman on the board who is seven points. So that covers this. Now crates are just going to allow you to put more crates on the board. They all have to be adjacent to one another, but you're going to want to place them in such a way that you can put a merchant in between them and get money for all of them. So that's walls, people, crates. We have the churches and the logs, but the final result is one that you don't want. And these are always going to count no matter whether you choose them or not because you can't choose them. So if my final result looked like this and I chose churches, I'd still have to mark this saber off. And when you mark this off, it marks off one of these spots on the round tracker on the board. And when you mark it off on the board like this, you'll see that you'll be coming closer to the end of a round, which is when a pirate attack happens. And the first attack is of strength one. So a strength one attack means that you need one defense in order to stop it, or one of your cannons will get destroyed. You can get this either from having soldiers, or if you manage to complete your walls by taking enough wall things, so you finished off this whole area, you will get two defense for each of these completed wall segments that you get. In addition, when you complete these wall segments, you'll see that there's a bonus in one of these towers. This one would say that you could place a person from levels 1 to 3. So once you finish this, you can put a person out on your board that's anything up to the merchant or architects. If you finish these ones here, it's going to let you get two coins. This one here will get you three victory points and another two coin one over on this side. So you're going to keep going until these happen, and if you don't have the defense when you get to the end of a round uh, or to the end of these four boxes in a two-player game, you have to cross off one of your cannons. So that wouldn't be good because you'd be losing five points at the end of the game. Then you'd start another round and the next attack will be at strength three, six, eight, ten, and twelve. Uh, and this is going to keep happening as long as people are choosing to get these uh, crossed sabers. So if you get a lot of defense early, maybe you're going to want to try and plan on making these advance faster, getting more sabers so that your opponent loses some of their cannons. Anyhow, you're going to keep playing in this manner, trying to gather up things, put different things in your city, uh, until you get to the point where someone finishes up their whole city. It's full with different buildings. At that point, you're going to end out the current round, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game, through the various mechanics I showed you, or uh, if you manage to fill your entire city, it's worth five bonus points at the end of the game. Each two coins is worth one point. Each log is worth one point. Minus five points for each cannon you've had crossed out and the bonuses from your adjacent churches, whoever has the most points through all of that will be the winner. Well, there you have it. That is St. Malo, uh, a game that I would like to compare to something else, but I can't really think of anything else exactly like it. Uh, the drawing on the board is an innovative thing that I haven't really seen before. I kind of like the whole, you have your own board and you get to draw on it, and it's, it's unique for the first time through, and then it becomes a little gimmicky. Uh, it's not really anything new, it's just a new way of representing doing the same thing. Instead of placing pieces, you draw your stuff out on the board. Uh, in terms of city building or building things in an efficient way, uh, there are other games that do it better than this game. This game is not uh, a great game. It's not a great game, but it does have a couple things going for it in terms of the innovative uses of things. But if you're looking for a game that does something similar uh, in a much better way, in my opinion, you can take a look at The Princes of Florence. I reviewed it not too long ago. Uh, it has a similar mechanic where you're getting things and placing them in your city. The methodology of getting them is very different uh, in that you buy them in auctions, but uh, it's more about optimizing the positions of things in your, your city and getting the right things in order to fulfill contracts. Uh, a similar theme, not really a similar way of working it out, but uh, a better game in my opinion. Anyhow, this is a much lighter version, one with an interesting uh, inclusion of drawing, so if you like that, kind of cool. Uh, but really, that's the most interesting thing it has going for it. Not a great game, an okay game, and one you might want to check out if it looks interesting to you. Thanks for watching our review today. 
For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.